All right, Nicholas, welcome back, buddy. And with that, let's dive in here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How's your day coming? It's going great. It's going better now that I'm hanging out with you. We're going to have some fun for <laughs> about 20 minutes or so. Um, yeah. I also want to mention to the Wicked Smile listeners, I did, I just missed it in the intro, and that is you are on episode 320. I, I That was a while ago. I don't know when that when that was, but go back and listen to that if you haven't heard, Nicholas, so we can dive into some really good meat here. Um, Nicholas, maybe just a little backdrop, like maybe, I don't know, a couple of minutes on how you landed in this lead gen space, because it's a hot thing right now, right? Like everybody wants to know, how can I get more? How can I get more? Like, how'd you land there? Then I want to talk specifically about what you do. Yeah, well, basically, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I always say my story is like a Bible story. You know, I spent 13 years as a restaurant manager. And that really taught me how to systematize anything, right? You know, when you got 40 different employees working, everyone's doing something different. That was like the beginning, whether I knew it or not. Um, after I left there, I became an executive at a real estate education company. All right. And then they taught people how to invest, but they had one main flaw. And that was that they only did direct mail. Mm, OK, yeah. and it was the only strategy that they ever spoke about. And, you know, although direct mail works for a new person, there's not that many skills to gain. Right. You pay it's the mail. House, it's, it, yeah, it's expensive and it's not very skillful. You pay the mailing house, you answer the phone. You pay the mailing house, you answer the phone. And when people buy education, they want to be educated. Right. They they want to walk away with the skill. So. I was an executive back then. I was not an entrepreneur. And I remember thinking like, what's free? They hated paying for it. What's free? <laughs> what is, is there something that's free out there for everybody? And I was like, oh yeah, we all pay for this thing. You know, why don't we start just having them cold call? Look, well, for the audio people, because uh, I, I hope you guys go see the video on YouTube because Nicholas always has great energy. But for the audio people, he's showing you his phone, that, that, that curious rectangle that we shall be using. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. And it's like, you know, as long as you're paying Verizon, you've got a free cold calling machine in your pocket. Right. And uh, and so instead of as soon as the client signing up, we're uh, saying, hey, you want to do three thousand dollars in direct mail. Now we're like, hey, why don't you just go get a list and get it skip traced and hammer it out? Yeah. Well, students loved it. And at the little to no cost they didn't get worn down as quickly through their education. Education can be frustrating. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it can, you know, um, it, it, it's difficult, especially if you aren't a big action taker. If you're a massive action taker, education is going to be your best friend, you know, but if you're an analytical person, you could be, you could be getting a little frustrated. So um, I, I started teaching cold calling. It blew up. It blew up so big. I actually got introduced to, to Dean Graziosi because yeah. of this strategy. And I, I even taught Dean Graziosi how to throw a cold calling event that I created but way back then. Really cool. So then when that job came to an end, I realized that, you know, I had to invest in my own real estate was my first goal. So I started cold calling 300 to 600 dials a day. And that, that was really where it started. Now, I never closed my first deal, but it's because... People saw me cold calling on Facebook because that's my personality. I was going live as like a personal accountability. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to go live every day. And that will force me to cold call every wow. day, right? Because yeah. no, one, no one wants to cold call. Like, like right. it sucks. <laughs> you know? So I created all these things. So I'm going live every day. And within a month, I'm collecting 800 bucks a week on the side to cold call for people. And that was really the start of lead mining. Ah, now, got it. Now, now, now we're six years in and we do about a million dollars a year in sales. Um, but that, that's when this accident was first created. That's awesome story. I, I also think it's a good grind story for people to hear. I, I'm curious, this wasn't on my list of things to ask you because I know our metrics in our community well, and you must know yours on the, on say, I don't know, hundred dials. What's the, what's the live rate? And then what's the, what's the lead rate from that? So our numbers are insane right now. All right. That's the good news. So we just switched over to Cold Tools version 2.0. And additionally, Cold Tools used to allow us to put our own phone number over their caller ID. They stopped that. They now make us buy their phone numbers. At first, that aggravated me because that means I'm uh, my expenses went up, right? Yeah. Um, but 
our contact rate right now on average is between 11 to 13 and a half percent. So live, huge. live rate to dial. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like when we call a hundred, we're getting 11 to 13, 14 people on the phone. Okay. And then from that, how many, how many, like we, you classify leads, everybody's a little different, but. So, yeah, so that's context. So then if we do leads, I'll spread it out to 500. So on 500 leads, yeah. depending on your market, yeah. our Americans can average anywhere from one to six leads. Now, okay. a way, let me go a step further and a way to, let me now score those numbers. One lead per 500 dials is questionable. Okay. That might not be good enough for you, but if there's if there's a hot lead and you're averaging it, you know you'll probably get ROI. Two leads, two leads, you're really you're you're doing something. If you're consistently not just once in a blue moon, yeah. but if you're consistently making five hundred dials and you're getting two leads every time, that's pretty good. Three leads or more, boy, you better run to the bank because if you're averaging three leads or more per five hundred dials and you're not closing deals, it probably has more to do with your processes than the lead flow, yeah. okay? And so that's kind of how I tell my clients to gauge those results for themselves. I love it, okay. This is good stuff because that's all we talk about in our coaching calls. So, okay, Lead Mining Pro, who are you guys calling? If I recall, and I wanna know if it changed from the last interview, it was mostly, am I right, saying out of state? Yeah, so absentees is yeah. what we is what we mainly focus on. So what I tell people is there's like a, I, I should flow chart this and give it away as great content, but there's like a pathway in my opinion that we start on. First, we start in the market you want to start in. And I recommend starting with absentee owners. Okay. If that fails, normally if that fails, it's a great sign your market is saturated. Okay. If the absentee list fails, okay, great. So we're in a saturated market. Now, what do we do? Well, if you're, if you really want to stick in that saturated market, then what I would do is I would then probably pivot to pre foreclosures. Okay. Now pre foreclosures is a small list and you'll probably be done with it in a week or so. Now, if pre foreclosures also fail, what I would do is I would pivot to a more rural area. Now, when I didn't say a rural area, I said a more rural area, right? And so I don't mean picking somewhere in the middle of nowhere, even though that will get great results, you know, but I want to just share a rule of thumb with people. The number one indicator of your success on a cold calling campaign is how much other people are calling them. So if you know you're in a saturated market, I wouldn't necessarily start there right away. I would start in the crappier surrounding markets that are going to be less bothered by cold callers, and then you'll get more leads. Okay, awesome. And how about, this is good content. How about, um, what's your, what are your thoughts or up to date? What are your thoughts on the whole, you know, restrictions and crap going on with call ID and all that? Like, what are your thoughts? So, you know, honestly, I haven't seen anything happen on cold calling which I'm super blessed about. Now I have, I, actually, I guess there there was a, a bur phone burner was recently sued because they were allowing their clients to put fake numbers on the caller ID. Oh, yeah. And it's actually against the law to outbound call from a fake phone number that doesn't exist. So that was one change that happened in cold calling. That just benefited me though, because then my contact rate went up as I buy now text messaging. If I could speak on that for a second. Sure. Yeah. I, I think that TCPA regulations is going to be just like the war on drugs. Okay. And if anyone who's seen Ozark, and I know Ozark wasn't a documentary, but I can guarantee you that America is seizing drug money and then paying off its national debt with it, right? Where we're not like sticking it in a vault and burning it just because yeah. it came from drugs, right? So, and I share that to say that texting is gonna be the same way. They're gonna increase regulations. They're going to, to you know, do all these strange things, but the only thing that's gonna happen at the end of the day is the price is gonna go up, Yeah. all right? Yeah. So like, you know, don't forget AT&T, Verizon, they're making millions off of us text messaging, millions. Yeah. So. They don't want to cut that off either, but they are going to make it more hoops to jump through. Like for us, example, we have to link our EIN to our phone number. That yeah. was a little scary to do. We had to send in a message 
that was going to be an example of what we're going to be sending. Like we had to go through all these hoops, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and at the end, the price goes up a little bit. So I wouldn't be too scared of texting regulations, but there are definitely going to be changes. Got it. Um, I'm doing that for more of the audience. I, I'm, I, I kind of thought you'd go that path, but I want to make sure they understand. Like this is you constantly. Well, let me get your opinion. What about the people that, that freeze because they hear stuff about the, the TPC or anything else? Like, what, what do you say to them? Before you I know, the more scared you are, the worst things that are going to come your way. <laughs> okay. You know, I've been alive a long time and I'm an insane optimist. And I'll tell you, if you're scared, if you're nervous, you're going to, you might manifest something like that. But what I will say is we've been in business for six years, we do 40,000 dials a week, only on our American side. We do 30,000 text messages a week and not a single client has ever been hurt by one of our campaigns. And if I was to say why, it's because we aren't assholes. You know, I think these homeowners that have a cross to bear, that have these things, I think that, that they're retaliating against, yeah. you know, when someone says, never call me again. We never call them again. It's true. We don't do it. We say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I will never, ever call you again. We actually say never, ever. Like, you know, everything we do, we're about reassuring them that we heard their message loud and clear yeah. and we respect their boundary. And I think when you do, some people, they go, screw you up. And then the, then the investor gets into a yelling match. That guy's going to sue you. Yeah. Okay? yeah. <laughs> if you argue with themselves, so, Play it cool, have a great attitude, and it know that as long as you actually come from a good place, this isn't going to happen. And the last thing I'll say is if anyone's being sued, and, you know, what did I, I was, I should probably say this, consult an attorney, because this is not legal advice. Right. But what right I'll on. say is this, if someone is out there facing a lawsuit, and the person that you're suing is threatening you a lot and they're trying to make you feel scared. Okay. I want you to imagine how what a bully is on a playground, right? And the bully on the playground uses fear as a tactic. And that person, if they actually had a case against, against you, they wouldn't be threatening you. They would just be serving you with paperwork. Right. Okay. And so I would just be wary of the bullies out there that just want to extort you and say, give me $2,000 and I won't tell anyone about this. You know right. what, buddy? I'm never going to text you again. You're actually now blackmailing me. I think that might be more against the law, uh, you know, and it's like, and just push Hold that. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't let that fear get your head all wrapped up. Yeah. Great advice. No, nope. super cool. Thank you. Um, let's talk about your your service in general because I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure people know about you in a big way because I, I every freaking mastermind call we have it's we need more lead sources how do we get more leads it, it's nonstop that's why I couldn't wait to have you on again um, so let's talk about that and let's I want to give a link because I'll forget we'll get Gavin um, for everybody listening and watching go to smartrealestatecoach.com forward slash lead mining pros we'll put it in the show notes too. But what talk about the service, uh, we'd be remiss not to, we'd be leaving that hanging. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, I, I've got a real summarized way to say it. We offer four main services all bundled up. Okay. Now, if it's bundled up, it's discounted, but we also offer it all a car. So if you don't need one of the four, you just want one of the four I'm about to cover. Right. Everything's available to you. So the four things we offer is we can pull a list in any market in America. And then I'm going to rattle them off quickly, but absentees, owner occupied, cash buyers, vacants, tax delinquents, pre foreclosures, land, mobile homes. I think I might have multifamilies, apartments. We that's can, a lot. <laughs> yeah. We can't get, that's probably a shorter list. We can't get probates. We can't get divorced. We can't get water shut off or you like, like the local yeah. niche stuff, right? We can't get that stuff, but we can get everything else. Then we skip trace it. Our skip trace is accurate over 80% of the time, which means well, you asked how many people answer out of 100. Yeah. That's about 11 to 13. Only two to three are telling us it's not the, the owner of the house. That's right? really strong. Yeah. That's strong because you know what? What I tell people is, well, Nick, I didn't get a lot of leads. Well, we spoke to 400 people, right? Yeah. So, you know, 
what I will say is it looks like your market might be saturated. We spoke to 400 people, but only 40 told us we had a wrong number. We spoke to 360 of the right person. And, and I only say that because when we're analyzing our KPIs, we don't want to make brash decisions, right? Like, oh, this isn't working. Well, the skip tracing is working. The list is working. Looks like the location isn't working, right? So and I also helped you dissect that, but we'll get to that. But we skip trace the list. Then we stick on our cold callers. And what's cool about us is a couple of things. No contracts, no commitments, no setup fees, but we also offer Americans or Filipinos. So you can come to us and hire an American and or hire a Filipino. Now, you might ask, when's the best time to use which? Here's the answer. If you know you're in a saturated market, use the Filipinos. And the reason why is if you're going to get one to three leads anyways, you might as well pay less. Okay, that, that's my strategy. Now, if you're in a market, a country market, Mississippi, Kansas City, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Georgia, I'd probably go Americans. Okay, you know, no matter what. So Americans for more suburban, more rural. And then Filipinos for, hey, I'm going to be in Atlanta. We're going to be in Phoenix. We're going to yeah. be in one of the hot spots. Got and it. then lastly, we also text message everybody as well. So we don't just text blast them and you sort the responses. We text blast them and we sort the responses and we continue responding on their behalf. So to make it in short, we pull the list, we skip trace it, we cold call it with the team of your choice and we text message it as well. Love it. And I can go month to month. I can do whatever the heck I want. Whatever you want. You know, most clients, if I'm being honest, like they'll use us. I feel like most clients are quarterly clients, right? They pick up, they buy the King Kong package. They use it for a month. They sort the leads for another month. They hire us again, right? But that's the beauty of what I offer yeah. is it's at your schedule. You can go on vacation for a week, pause us and everything. I love it. So even week to week, not month to month. Yeah, that's love right. It. Okay, love it. So smartrealestatecoach.com forward slash lead mining pros. Um, Nicholas, I, I mean, I hope to have you at our events and all kinds of cool stuff. I know you're talking to our team. So for the listeners to know, this this show, I think I said it already. This show is coming out a week before our Summer of Deals event. It's virtual, guys. Just go to summerofdeals.com. You should be yeah. there. And then all we're doing is deals. Nick's gonna show you how to get them. We're gonna show you how we structure them and all the nuances and all the crap that can come up and how to handle it. And then uh, the QLS Live event in September, of course, QLSlive.com. Um, awesome. Nicholas, what did we? Any other nuggets that we didn't hit as I as we wrap up? Because I want this out there. And I don't want to leave anything hanging. You know, I would just say that when, you know, I recently had an investor who got 90 leads from us, okay? And he said, you know, Nick, I got 90 leads, but I don't have any closed deals. You know, I think you guys are missing something. And I said, well, to be honest, if we got 90 leads, I don't think we missed a damn thing. No, I think I'm he's missing something. And I said, you know, man, I think you might be missing something. I said, look, what I would do if I was you is I would go back over those leads and I would look for what you are missing. And I'm sharing that story because sometimes when we're consumers, it's so easy to, you know, put it on the vendor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but we have to look at our own internal system. So here's some tips I want to give just before we depart Love on it. pursuing leads. Because what I've learned is getting leads for us is the easy part. Getting my clients to call the leads with a great attitude. In the right that, script. Yep. That, right. That's the challenge. Yep. Speaking of right scripts, we even offer all the scripts on the website. So using the link he gave, there's a button that says free script. We have seven scripts in there that tell you what to say when you get a lead, before you get a lead. Or even it. when someone just calls back, but some tips on being prepared. One, make sure you have a process for every lead. Okay. You know, every lead should have a process. Uh, if they tell you to go screw yourself, 
what's the process? If they tell you that they're not ready, what's the process? If they tell you that they are ready, what's the process? And I share that to say, we don't have time to be a deer and have, oh, oh, they told me to go screw myself. Oh, what am I going to do? No, let's just follow the go screw yourself process here. That's all we're going to do. <laughs> all right. We're going to put him in a follow up. We're going to message him later. He's good. And I share that because what happens is people will read notes and one thing doesn't say what they want it to say. And then they don't call the lead because of that one thing. And if you have a process, you put every lead through meticulously, no matter what the notes say, you're going to find that you're closing way more deals. Yeah. And one last little nugget I'll share with you. I, I had a meeting with this high level, high level client of mine. And he told me that here's how he trains his acquisition managers. He has them listen to the first call recording that says, um, I'm not going to take less than $400,000 for this house. And then he shows the acquisition manager what they actually got it under contract for. And he's like, look, 250. And he says, the next time someone says a high number to you, you better not hang that phone up. Right. And I think that that is a mistake that almost all investors fall for. One thing doesn't go their way and they bolt right out the door. And the truth is, this is why I love your system with the creative finance strategy and everything, because the most important thing you can do is keep the conversation in play. Keep it going. Talk to them. You never, a tree could fall on their house tomorrow. Their aunt could get diagnosed with cancer. You don't even know what's going to happen. Right. And so you keep them in play and you're going to close way more deals. Love it. Love it. Nick, energy content uh, to the max. I appreciate you, buddy. And, and again, for the listeners to know, get your foot in the community in some shape, form, or fashion, because we're going to be hanging out with Nicholas a little bit more on purpose. And I know you're already meeting with the team, as I said earlier. So thanks again, buddy. Awesome, awesome energy and awesome content. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, Chris.